Hey guys, welcome to Cisco Nate. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to integrate ISE 3.0 with Active Directory. And that's highly important because it's used in your TACX and your 802.1x radius, as well as your administrative login privileges. If you don't wanna use local, and most people don't, it's best practice to have it integrated with an identity store. So we're gonna go through that here. See you guys in a few. Diving into the requirements for ISC 3.0 integration to Active Directory, you will need, obviously, ISC 3.0. Now, this will work for older versions of ISC as well, but what I'm showing you here, of course, is 3.0. You'll need Windows Server with Active Directory running. In this case, I'm doing Windows Server 2016. Yours can be any version of Windows Server as long as it has Active Directory service running. You'll need to create a service account for ISC on that server, and I will show you how to do that. And then you'll need a web browser or computer to go ahead and access these components and configure them. All right, we'll get right to it. See you guys in a few. All right, guys, so we're back. Uh, first thing I'm going to do, as usual, is RDP into my lab. So we should have an IC instance, if you watched the previous video on how to deploy this, that is fully installed and ready to go. And uh, you also, of course, need Active Directory stood up. So first thing we're going to do is navigate to our ISE, uh, which appears to already be here. Okay, so it looks like it had a cookie caching the browser session. As always, log out and log back in to ensure you don't run into any issues. So I'm going to log in, can't use AD, with my admin credentials. Those are the credentials that you used when you set up ISE using the setup command. All right, and once they're authenticated in, uh, we're gonna go ahead and navigate, click the three hash marks, go to administration, go to external identity sources. Click on Active Directory. Now at this point, some of you may run into an issue that's fairly common. Many of us run ad blockers, and in this case, I run Adblock Plus. Now in Chrome in particular, with Adblock Plus, if it is enabled, when you click add, nothing will happen. And this is through no shortcomings on Cisco's side. This is specifically because Adblock Plus is designed to block JavaScripts that include the word or letters AD, add in them, right? And as you can imagine, Active Directory focused scripts will have the word or letters add in them. And that is exactly what happens here. Now, that is likely going to stay. Adblock Plus will probably never change that. And Cisco obviously is not going to change their Active Directory add scripts. So it's just something you're gonna have to do, either add exceptions to the filters for this site or stop blocking altogether on IAC. And that is the approach I would recommend. Just turn off blocking on your IAC deployments. All right, with that out of the way, let's click add. Now the join point name, it just needs to be a human readable name, something you will recognize. Now, since this is my Cisco Nate Active Directory, I'm gonna put Cisco Nate AD. It's very easy for me to remember, AD is Active Directory, Cisco Nate is my Active Directory. The next line is one that actually needs to tie into something that's already configured and needs to be explicitly correct. And that is the domain you are joining. Now in my case, my domain is ciscoNate.local. And that name responds in DNS to identify your domain controller. So when the ISC reaches out for ciscoNate.local, the domain controller and DNS responds with the IP of the domain controller itself. This has to be correct. All right, so once you've done that, you hit submit. And here we go. Do you want all ISC nodes to join this Active Directory domain? Yes, now in this case, I only have one, you may have more. Now the AD username you supply here needs to be one that has administrative credentials on the domain. And what's cool about the way ISC does this, and the reason you don't need an account already existing under your managed service accounts or machine account, is because when you supply these admin credentials, ISC reaches out using those credentials and creates a new account for ISE to use and then switches over to using that. So you don't need to specify an OU, you can if you want, but I'm keeping this simple. You don't need to store credentials. That is if you're joining multiple domain controllers. Uh, I am not and you are not right now. We're gonna keep this simple. So once you've done that, hit okay. Now it's gonna run through, do some che checks to make sure it can join. It did, completed and it shows operational. Now, if you did not get that result, there are many reasons why that could happen. Everything from DNS entries not being correct to reachability just not being there through your network. If you do run into those issues, run the diagnostic tool and look at the output. It is pretty plain Jane and will explain exactly what is the issue most of the time. I don't have time to go into all the different or common scenarios which cause failures, 
but the biggest one by far is reachability and the second biggest one is DNS. Make sure your DNS entries are correct and make sure you can reach the AD server. All right, so that's it. We'll go ahead and hit save. Oh, we, we're already saved, we're good. So we're joined, this is it for this video. I will follow this video up with another one that shows you how to use AD in all of the services, including administration of ISC. Thanks, have a good one, guys.